Hi, this video is going to be about uh, the Canon Canonet and uh, two reasons why I think it's a fantastic piece of technology. This camera came out in 1961 and uh, within two years it had sold a million units and there are a couple of good reasons why. Well, first of all, it was way ahead of its game. Um, it has here a selenium meter. You might see these in other um, early cameras as well. And effectively what it does is it has a chemical compound that reacts to the amount of light available to it. So uh, today, for example, if you have a digital camera, you will note that sometimes it'll have like a shake or a blur um, indicator, which tells you that your camera is trying to shoot something that it's too dark to actually um, take a good photo of. It will be shaky or blurry or dark. This has exactly that same technology without a single battery. So here, um, there is a mechanism that, for example, if I were to make this pretty dark, the camera will not actuate. Let me make sure that it's actually windable. So let me try again. It won't work. Right? Now, if I actually take off my hand and have something uh, uh, that I can actually shoot at, it will work. Now, it's a bit sticky because I'm trying to uh, do a quick demonstration of the second reason why I think this is an awesome camera. Again, number one, it doesn't have a battery. Number two, it was super easy to repair. Um, so if you think of it, in 1961, a bunch of cameras are coming out of the market, and a lot of them are hard to repair, a lot of them are flimsy, a lot of them break easily. Now, if you're a camera seller, you want something that you can sell that is reliable, and if it isn't reliable, at least it's something that you want to fix. This particular camera, you'll see, has three screws, one, two, and three. You just take off those three screws, and boom! you already have access to some parts of the innards. Obviously, you don't have access to all of them. You'd have to go through, for example, in order to fix the lens, you have to actually take off the, the, the fake leather leatherette. But um, it's super simple. And this was revolutionary for um, at the time because everyone wanted something that was reliable. And this, you might argue, makes the camera feel a little less reliable. In fact, um, you can, it is a bit squishy and sometimes, but it's, it overall feels really in my mind, that's really good. Number three, um, one of the things that really revolutionized why this was particularly repairable is you'll notice that on this side, the metal is sort of light. On this side, the metal is sort of dark. And that is for a reason. This entire assembly for the, the viewfinder is completely modular and separate from this assembly, which handles all of the shutter and um, v uh, count mechanism. And in order to, to demonstrate that, I've actually taken off one, two, three screws, and I can show you that um, I won't take it apart entirely, but you can tell that this entire assembly is uh, effectively removed and separate from this particular part. The last thing that I want to share that's really cool is this particular flimsy looking metal component. You might wonder, well, what does that thing do? Well, let's take a look. You'll notice that it reacts differently to the availability of light. Now, if you were paying attention a little bit earlier, I was talking about the selenium meter. Effectively, that selenium meter is able is then um, transmitted by some of the mechanisms here. And essentially, what happens when you press a shutter is that that meter, that sort of copper line reacts, stops at one segment of this particular half arc, um, intercepts a line right there, by another mechanism determines how much of the shutter should remain open because for example if there is not enough light it should try and open the shutter up to allow in more light and lastly it will actually change a little display right here you might be able to see a little bit of the red component at the very bottom right there changes a the little display there that through the mirrors right here and right in this clear window right here will display the number at which this particular lens aperture is set at right in this view. Now this is a rangefinder, so I'm looking through here. I can see a bunch of numbers at the bottom. Those numbers are actually determined and, and actually um, written, if you will, right here. But because of these mirrors, these sort of one mirror, two mirrors here, um, you can actually see it right on this screen. This is exactly the same kind of technology to make uh, Google Glass work, where you're seeing straight ahead, but you can see additional displays. So again, this is a camera from 1961. Um, you have to give it to the Canon guys. This is truly 